guys, it's Emily. Welcome to another Grass River Micro Class. So last week when we were talking about how turtles survive winter, I mentioned that some of our other ectotherms or cold-blooded animals actually spend the winter on land where they have to contend with the serious problem of freezing, which normally would cause certain death in most animals. But today we're going to talk about how certain land hibernating frogs actually freeze solid on purpose as a way to survive winter. So frogs actually have a variety of ways that they survive winter depending on what type of frog. Um, so a Aquatic frogs, frogs that spend the majority of their time in the water, things like leopard frogs and American bullfrogs, they will survive the winter in a similar way as turtles. They'll um, hang out on the bottom of the pond and take in oxygen through their skin um, from the water. If um, it's a species of frog or toad that um, is a really good digger, something like an American or Fowler's toad, um, those species use their hind legs to dig into the soil so far down that it's below the frost line so they don't have to worry about freezing to death. Um, because remember, if you're an ectotherm, you take on whatever temperature is um, in the surrounding environment. Um, so if you are a terrestrial frog and you're not a good digger, then you have a problem because you can't go below frost line. So this includes species like wood frogs, uh, spring peepers, gray tree frogs, and chorus frogs, all of which we have here at Grass River. So if you are one of these species, what you do is in, as, as winter is approaching in late fall, um, you'll find a relatively sheltered spot on land. So for wood frogs, we know it's usually under the first layer of leaves. Um, for gray tree frogs, sometimes um, under a very thin layer of bark. Um, so relatively sheltered, but not, so, not a place that's going to protect you from freezing to death when the temperatures drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so what these frogs do in the winter is they actually freeze solid. So here's how it works. When they are in these sheltered places where they're going to spend the winter, the very first ice, ice crystal that makes contact with their skin, even if it's on their baby toe, it sets off this huge alarm response. And this is the same response that um, we know is the fight or flight um, reaction. So, you know, releases huge amounts of um, glucose or sugar into the cells, um, blood goes to the muscles, um, heart, rate, heart rate and breathing increase. Um, so everything that would help you escape like a lion charging at you across the Serengeti, which is what um, it evolved for, right? Um, so in these frogs though, this fight or flight response has been highly modified so that the amount of glucose or sugar that is released is enough that a relative amount um, to the amount of blood that we have in our bodies would kill humans multiple times over. Um, so it's this huge amount of sugar that is released into the body um, or into the cells rather. Um, and what this does for frogs, for these land hibernating frogs, is that it basically turns the water that is inside the cells into this really thick syrup and it acts like antifreeze. So if you could think of like molasses on a January day, it's not frozen solid, but it's really thick. It's like that, it's antifreeze. And so those, that protects the cells from actually freezing. At the same time, special proteins are released into the space between the cells that um, serve as nucleation sites to promote the formation of ice crystals. But it's important um, to note that this happens outside the cells, right? which is super essential because if this ice formation happened inside the cells, ice crystals basically act like tiny little knives and they would slash open all the cell organelles, the cell membranes, and they would kill the cells. Um, lead to, it would lead to cell death. But these nucleation sites are outside the cells. Um, and it also, these nucleation sites kind of use osmosis as a way to draw extra water out of the cells, um, which, further increases the syrupiness, the thickness of, and the antifreeze effect, therefore, of the um, water that's inside the cells. So you might be wondering, how are frogs able to survive this 
um, huge amount of glucose if it would be enough to kill hu send humans into a coma and kill us multiple times over. That question is not, has not been fully answered, but we know it has something to do with the fact that these frogs, because they are ectothermic, remember cold-blooded as opposed to our um, warm-bloodedness, that their body temperature is so low already, so near freezing when this happens, that their metabolism is so slowed down that it doesn't necessarily affect the body processes um, in the same way that it would affect a warm-blooded animal like a human. So within just 15 hours of this alarm response being set off, the frog can be 65% frozen solid, meaning that all of that space between the cells is frozen solid as ice, and then the um, cells themselves are packed with this super syrupy, thick, antifreeze-like substance. Um, and what's insane about this is that by all appearances and definitions, the frog is totally dead. There's no heartbeat, there's no breathing, there's no blood flow. And it remains, it can remain like that for months. In Alaska, wood frogs can remain like that for seven months. But then, when spring comes and the weather warms above 32 degrees, the frogs just thaw out and they just hop away and go about the business of mating in the spring. So this is one of my favorite winter adaptations, completely defies, um, logic and our definitions of death so super cool um so yeah you know next time you're in the woods think about it there could be wood frogs or spring peepers hibernating you know right off the trail frozen solid um yeah so thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you next time bye